even though you are the big you within and throughout it all, it's not the you trying to gain access and control to what's happening. And so even though you are the small case you and the uppercase you, the real question is, who are you serving? Whose will are you serving? Even though a lot of religious institutions can become very dogmatic, very dualistic, very superstitious, very fear-based, the one thing they have going for them is they're very clear on whose will they're serving. Now, the truth is the highest will you're serving is the big you. But the big you is not the same you trying to make things different. The big you is what you fall into, what you dissolve into, what you let go and what catches you as you dare to free fall. You, but not the you you perceive yourself to be. Just feel. Whose will are you serving? It's a really good question. I've never asked it in this forum before. Whose will are you serving? Because if you're serving the will of your highest self, you will ultimately know that every situation you're in is happening for a positive therapeutic reason. And the one thing that won't help the evolution of your being along a path created, governed by your highest self is to fight and negotiate with it. Whose will are you serving? Here's what's interesting about alignment. I have had many realizations of true nature. I have realized myself to be the totality of light. And I live as the uninterrupted experience of that revelation. It has been integrated into my cellular body, my physical body, and so forth. I have realized that that which we would call heaven's kingdom is the eternal I am. And if someone were to ask me, whose will am I serving? I serve the will of God. And I will live and die for that any day of the week. And some people who become realized get it twisted. Oh, no, 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 God, no, 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 I, I, I am that. Yes, you are. But when it truly wakes up in you, there is no confusion that there is a God and that is what you're serving. And the, and the question is, how deeply have you allowed it to change you? Because it has changed everything about me. I, I'm, I'm nothing like I used to be. And I'm thankful. who I used to be was not a bad or malicious person, but it was time for him to rest in peace. And the only thing that's left in my life is my service to God. And that's not dualistic, that's oneness. Because only the will of God serves the will of God. That's oneness. And it, cho it chokes me up because that's my love for God, and that's my love for the God I serve in you. It is so personal for me. I make all of this so personal, and that's how I do the work I do. So personal. Because I, 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 I know what's on the line. I came here to get it right, and there is a getting it right. And if there wasn't a getting right, you wouldn't keep coming back, and we do to get it right. 
And when you get it right, there's no describing or stopping you. Whose will are you serving? Whose will are you serving? And it doesn't matter for me what day it is, what I'm doing. If you are a fly on the wall in my life, you see me dancing around, singing songs about made up things, because it makes me laugh. And I praise the name of God in everything I do. Every moment of my life is gospel hour in my heart. And when I was younger, I was taught about a religious God. And when I had my out-of-body experience, I met the reality of God. And there's a reality of God that is so real, it will blow your mind. And one taste of truth will annihilate any misperception within you. And it will eradicate any amount of negotiating within you. And you will just know on the highest level what cannot be fathomed and grasped and grokked in your mind and solidified into a concept and made into a rule. It goes way beyond that. You serve the will of God. No matter how anyone acts or behaves, and you don't let people who mistreat you close into your reality, but you don't have to retaliate vengefully either because you are surrendered in heaven's kingdom, serving the will of that which is your highest self. And that which even a being who is completely self-realized and knows themselves to be all that is, is still in service as if they're a character in service to a higher totality. Because that's, that's the energy, that's, that's the mentality of divinity all of divinity is fully realized, and it all works together like a choir of angels who cooperate in perfect harmony and unison. All of God serves the will of God. And if everything is God's will, what are we questioning? And all we're doing is using our imagination to imagine what we might miss out on and challenging that which has always held you and will always carry you along from one edge of reality to another. Back and forth, back and forth until you notice the cosmic hand that carries you. The hand that belongs to you. Whose will are you serving? The will that I serve is more important than what I want personally. If it is the will of God, I will be a New York Times bestselling author, right? I serve the will of God. That's my credential. I remember talking to someone on an airplane. They said, oh, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm an energy healer. At the time, that's what I just put. Yeah, you always change what you say. I'm an energy healer, I'm a spiritual, whatever, teacher, whatever. Um, and they said, oh, really? Um, who appointed you to be able to do that? And I said, the, the will of God. <laughs> Primarily the will of God. I mean, it's not a certification course. It's not accredited. <laughs> it is very effective. Thank God no continuing education credits. That's happening every day already. I serve the will of God. That word God brings me a lot of joy because I know the truth of it. I've, I, I've seen the light, I've seen heaven, I've been to heaven. I've been to the Akashic Records. That's why I do things like entering the Akashic Records, Angel Academies, 
I want you guys to have the experiences I've had and glean what I've experienced. I've experienced the light of God being the one I am, and I still then live as the character that serves the will of God. That's because that's the play of form. But it's not a religious God. It's not dualistic. It's not a magical genie living in a cloud looking down judging you. It's not spiritual Santa Claus. It's the most indescribably miraculous love you've ever known. And it will change you if you just sit still and give it a clear shot. It's aiming for you. It's going gonna, it's gonna to send its light right into your heart. All you got to do is sit still and give God the easiest time getting you. Someone once asked me, what's meditation? I said, meditation is the ability to sit still and wait for God to carry you home. And someone says, and what if God doesn't come? I said, you keep sitting until it comes for you. That's reality. Whose will are you serving? When you're serving the will of the divine, there could be questions, curiosities. Hey, how does this work? Hey God, if I twist this lever and push this button, what happens? I should I shouldn't do that. No. Okay. But I really I really I really I really want I really want to. No? Okay. <laughs> no? Okay. Well, that's how global warming got created? Someone just twisted the lever? Oh, okay. Could you imagine? Someone in heaven, angel's like, what's this do? Oh, shit. <laughs> shit, I pulled a lever, now there's holes in the ozone layer. Oh, my God. Whoopsie daisy. Whoopsie daisy. Whose will are you serving? Because here's the thing, when you're serving the will of God, and the will of God takes all the pressure off you, because you go, you know what? Everything's, everything's going to work out. It's going to be fine. I just look in front of me, one foot in front of the other, making the simplest decisions. Am I in danger? Am I being threatened? Am I being mistreated? If I am, move. If not, stay still. Have a seat. Relax. And welcome everything into your heart as the will of God. You'll be surprised how little there is to process from that point of view. Because when you really surrender, do you know what goes out the door when you fully surrender? All the shit you're working on. It all gets surrendered. Because don't you work on yourself and work on yourself and work on yourself, then you get to optimal frequency for like two days at best. For two days, you're like, I did it. Boy, am I, look at this. Go parade yourself to your friends, check this out. Activated light body. Look who's ascending. I did it right, y'all. Maybe I should create my own certification program. And then after the third day, it starts to kind of wax and wane, and you're like, oh my God, what's happening? Oh my God, am I going into a lower vibrational tailspin? Is the Illuminati doing this to me? That's what it is. I became too powerful, and they went, we cannot have this. They're becoming too powerful. They were going to be taken out of power. Mix up their chakras. Spin them around. Do you, know, do, you know, do you know how self-indulgent it is to think that a secret group that is supposedly taking over the entire world is threatened by you? 
I guess I was shining too bright. And the Illuminati people were threatened by me. That's why I'm not a New York Times bestselling author. Those guys did it. <laughs> and then all of a sudden things creep back in and creep back in and your condition creeps back in and you go, oh my God, I had it, I got it. What happened? Here's the reality. The reality is you do work on yourself, you do make headway and it all is for a great purpose. But in the end, if we want to talk end game, end game, end game is you'll work on things, you'll make great headway and it's all for a, a purpose, but you'll never quite get it all completely healed. Because what heals it all is saying, everything that I've made into a 20,000 lifetime process and project, which is the project called me, I'm just gonna hand over. I'm gonna hand it back to that which created it and say, I think you were doing a good job all along. I'm done picking at this. I'm done jabbing this and dissecting it under a microscope. Sorry for that. Didn't mean to tear apart your creation, put some band-aids all over it. My bad. Here you go. You were doing a fantastic job all along. I'm just gonna let go. And I'm going to just know that everything is gonna work out. If it's not today, it's gonna be tomorrow, it's gonna be next week, it's gonna work out sometime. And I'm just going to allow this to be a mystery instead of a psychological thriller. And I'm going to accept the fact that I don't know where the hell I'm going. I don't know what any of this is. And even as I say it, it's kind of pleasant. I'm gonna let go and allow that which brought me here carry me through. And that is an end game called relief. Whose will are you serving? Because the will of that which you are serving, because you're given the freedom of will, so when you are ready for the end game and the deeper journey, you can use your will to choose to serve the will of that which is serving you. Our creator says, I love you so much, I will allow you to come home on your terms. The lights will be on. Come home anytime. Door is always unlocked. You choose. It's an end game I call freedom from healing. Because even when you heal, they're still being caught in the managing your healing tailspin. And you never quite get to the other side of it. So if you want an end game, hand yourself back to that which brought you here and serve that which is serving you. And maybe take the bold leap and say, you know what? Maybe it's gonna go my way, maybe it never will. I just can't take this anymore. And not, I can't take it anymore to go back to heaven and take your own life. I, I can't live like this. I can't live like this. I can't live like this telling myself that I'm only gonna be happy when certain things happen. I'm done. It's nauseating, it doesn't make any sense, and it can't be the way life works. So I'm gonna teach myself the way life works by handing myself back. Surrender. It's a funny way of saying, hey God, here you go, I'd like to make a return. So sorry I did not save my receipt. And I'll take whatever credit you'd like to give me. I'm done. Not I'm done being me. I'm done denying me. 
I'm done denying me. And there's no better way to deny you than to be lost in what you're chasing. Because you can't seek what you desire and appreciate who you are right now at the same time. There's a choice to be made. And when you appreciate who you are, you have relief from seeking. And when you seek, you forget to be grateful for what you already are. Hypnotizing yourself to believe that who you're gonna become is so much better, so let's run away from this pretty quickly. And we're running away from surrender. Whose will are you serving? You are here to care for yourself by being the space in which divinity can move through and make sure you're taken care of. But you're not here to micromanage yourself, you're not here to dissect yourself, you're not here to ridicule yourself, you're not here to bully yourself. And you can tell yourself every day, I'm gonna do this differently. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. Just make sure you're talking to yourself nicely because there's an innocence in you that is divinity that knows every trick in the book. And we can't outsmart ourselves. We can only hand ourselves over to the will of God. And what surrender looks like is the willingness to enjoy the mystery and unfolding of life free of the negotiation that did nothing but exhaust you. And it exhausted you to break you down so that you had no other impulse but to surrender. And because you were created by a source that is all love, it is hardwired into our DNA to surrender into this evolutionary awakening process. And what distracts from that process is the belief that something different on the outside is gonna make you feel better or different, only temporarily. And it's only temporarily because it's the new car smell, it's newness. Newness creates temporary perceptions of euphoria called contrast, where something momentarily feels different than the way it used to be, or it looks different, and by contrast, it must be better. That's just a moment of euphoria, that's a state change. That's us feeling the elegance of this breeze right now, and we couldn't feel the breeze unless we were oppressed by the heat all day. Whose will are you serving? And as I say it, it's not because I'm asking you to surrender yourself, but if you feel deep into the energetics of what I'm transmitting, as I'm saying all this, some of the things I didn't even know were going to happen, like me crying. You can actually feel the energy is actually surrendering you for you. What you're experiencing is not even you have to be the one in charge of surrendering yourself because then you're just going to keep trying to surrender yourself until you feel better. I surrender. Not yet. Not feeling it yet. I really surrender myself. I really let, my, I let myself go. Even that can be a tailspin, right? So it's the energy I'm transmitting that is surrendering you for you, so not even that has to be up to you. Not even surrendering yourself back to heaven's kingdom is up to you. That's a revelation. There's just a moment where you realize, holy shit, I'm done. I am done. And life's going to be amazing, and things are going to go my way, and things won't go my way. It's going to be good, it's going to be bad, it's going to be up, it's going to be down. I am done playing a game of hide-and-go-seek with my own divinity. I'm tired of this. I'm done. And that's when something real opens up inside of you. And of every human being, something real opens up inside you. Something that is not based on what do I need to do in order to coax and manipulate the universe to give me new stuff. Which is just a spiritual version of if I'm really nice, mom and dad will buy me a brand new backpack before school begins. Just innocence.
Just feel. Feel this vibration. This is, this is the, literally the frequency of existential relief. This is like, okay, whatever happens for my life from this moment on, I think I'm going to be okay. Something I needed to do in this lifetime, I think, just happened. Right? You feel like, I think I just did, something just happened. If life's a game, I just won. Like something just happened. And then you can just relax. Relax. Let everyone else fight for what they want. Let everyone else fight to be number one. Let everyone else fight for whatever they're going to fight for. You have found truth. You have found freedom. You have found peace. You have found the doorway that leads to freedom to heal, from healing. You have entered the afterlife without needing to ditch your body first. Because that's what you're feeling right now, the afterlife. That's where I live. I live in the afterlife while still in a body on an earth plane. That's what I transmit when I'm with you, is the frequency of heaven, the afterlife. I died without leaving my body, and I resurrected as something new within it, just like what you are experiencing and what I help you through. And what I'm talking about is not the beginning of the end. It is merely the end of the beginning. We get past all the exhaustion. We get past all the distractions. We get past all the negotiating and fighting and using our imagination against ourselves and imagining there's something imaginary up ahead that you're missing out on. And the end of the beginning is when life says, you've been prepared, now it's time for the real journey. Now you're ready to be guided. And when you're ready to be guided, you'll cross the street, stand on the corner, and count to 10. I've never taught that before in that way. You can feel how special that is. Sacred. No matter how funny everyone thinks I am, and that's wonderful. You know, I, I'm not someone who tries to be funny. It just happens. I don't care if I'm ever funny. I just want it to be sacred and beautiful. The funny comes when it comes. But no matter how many times we cry until we laugh or laugh until we cry, the question you will be asked with no judgment or condemnation coming your way, the question is, whose will are you serving? Whose will are you serving? Because when you're serving the will of the creator that you are, You are on the trajectory of resolution. And the journey then becomes many things, one of which is learning how to live like this. And the easiest way to live like this is to wonder how the hell you live the other way for so long. How the hell did I make it here in one piece living like that? I always joke and say, that's why you don't hear from your angels, because they're too busy keeping you alive. Like parents running around with precocious children. Ooh, scissors, let's put it into a socket. An outlet. That'd be neat, what happens? Oh, markers. A blank wall. Let's draw pictures. Prior to awakening, life is spiritual childhood. 
the awakening process is spiritual adolescence. The surrendering of yourself and the integration of awakening is spiritual adulthood. And the integration of enlightenment is spiritual rebirth, transcendence, Easter Sunday. The reason for the season. And as you all hear me talk about so often, the second coming of Christhood is the I am awakening in the collective. That I am, that second coming, is the we, we consciousness. And in order to find the we, the me has to be flipped upside down, doesn't it? That's why everything's so topsy-turvy. Because life is saying, you know, this will be a so, lot, a, so much more exciting if you just hand yourself over. Doesn't mean you don't care for yourself physically. It's just you're not lost in being afraid for yourself, concerned for yourself. Where am I going? What am I going to do? Am I going to like it? Am I really going to like it? Am I going to like it forever, for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, two years, one year, three years? Oh my God. You told me this would only last for one year. What if it was a leap year? Maybe I got another one. Just take a moment and feel yourself just being handed back over. The invitation of surrender would be so much easier if God was just so direct saying, are you done messing with yourself? No, not yet? Okay. We'll come back in a little bit. Then God comes back. Are you done messing with yourself? You took that apart. You got to remember how to put it back together. Got parts spread all over your bedroom. Like a kid who takes apart a blender to see how it works. Oh no, I remember how it all goes back together. Now mom and dad don't have a blender. And God is so merciful, God says, you know what? Don't put it back together. Just give me all the wires and gears. I'll take that. And the child says, nope, not yet. I'm going to figure out how to put it back together. Okay. We'll be back. Until one day, here you go. I'm done. And that's when you're ready for your real journey. The reason so much of our life hurts so much is because we haven't actually gotten to real journey. We're still in practice. Once you fully surrender, that's when the real journey starts. So I'm helping to prepare you for the real journey. What you've done is real. It's been beneficial and necessary. But it's time to move on from practice to real journey. You ever had this feeling of things feeling kind of lucid and weird? It's because you're in practice realm. You're not in the real realm yet. You're in dreamland. Lucid dreamland. It's a real thing. And something inside you goes, and I'm done. And that's when reality starts waking up in you. To answer the question, not through your thoughts, but through your actions. Whose will are you serving? It's a very good question to ask yourself. Just feel. It's not enough to say, I will serve your will as long as it goes according to my plan. 
that's not serving anyone else's will but yours. And that's okay, but that only gets you so far. And if the spiritual journey is like driving a car on a road trip, you forgot to fill up at the rest stop, we've run out of gas, the light's been blinking, and now the car is stalled out. We have to get out of the car and walk. Just feel. You'll still have desires once you're surrendered. Just won't have as much of a grip on you. It's kind of like a casual thing. It's kind of like, wouldn't it be neat if this happened? And if it does, that's cool. If not, oh well. When you're really surrendered, whether the things you desire happen for you or someone else, you're equally as happy because you still get to experience it. Whether it happens to you or through the experience of someone else, you still get to experience it. So it's still cool. Wouldn't it be cool if blah, blah, blah happened? Just very casual. Sometimes surrender can be the simple shift from, I can just be myself without having, without having to be in charge of myself. Do you know what I mean? I don't have to micromanage myself and bully myself and control myself. I just be myself. Hey, Matt, I haven't seen you for a couple months. Where are you living these days? In God's hands. It's a gated community. It's quite lovely. In God's hands. That's where I live. I said that once to someone who's really into the self-realized stuff, which is fine, but sometimes we, we, we miss the devotion. You could be so in the, I am this, that you're not really in devotion to that. I said, so where do you live these days? In God's hands. I said, oh, you mean in your hands? I said, yeah, in God's hands. And I said, I think you, I think you got something mixed up. Oh no, I'm very clear. I'm quite clear. Quite clear on what this all is quite clear on where this all is going and quite clear on who I am and what this all is. Quite clear. Thank you. No misunderstandings over here. 
with all due respect. And when you live in that space, you're no longer attracted to opportunity, you're attracted to alignment. It's not just, ooh, this could happen. Ooh, that would be exciting. Look what I could get away with. Hey, that sample of, that sample of teriyaki chicken at the mall was pretty awesome. No one's looking, I could take another one. It's having attracted opportunity and what you can get away with. My God, I went to the store and it was a new clerk. I told him it was double coupon day and they totally believed me. Right? When you're an ego, it's what I can I get away with. When you are aligned in God consciousness, it's I only want things to unfold in alignment. I only want to attract things under the highest level of ethics. Like I said earlier, it's been my childhood dream to be a New York Times bestselling author, and I will only experience that under the most authentic of terms. There are certain ways you can work an algorithm or marketing to circumvent a system. I don't want to know anything about that. I'm old fashioned. I write a good book, people buy it. And if I'm meant to have that credential, I'll have it in God's hands, not mine. I'm not attracted to opportunity, I'm attracted to alignment. And the old me wasn't a bad me. It was a very impulsive me, I'll give him that. An impulsive me, attracted to opportunity. The new me, attracted to alignment. I only want what I want if it's aligned in the highest ethics and integrity. And if it's not, I say no. Even if it's 99% there and there's 1% lag. Nope. I'm at a level where I can't even afford to do that because it affects my energy too much. Eh, 95%. That's enough of a tipping point. 80%. Good enough. Not for me, it's not. Things are either 100% aligned or they're not. That's how it goes in my life. All or nothing. 100% alignment or nothing. I know how to go without. And if I'm meant to have the experience, it will circle back around like it will for you. But are you willing to take the, the journey of courage and saying, I'm gonna say yes to alignment and if it's not what feels totally right in my heart, not good enough for me. Hold that boundary for yourself and watch the things you create and attract. And what gets us across the threshold from opportunity to alignment is being mistreated by people in your life who are attracted to you via opportunity, not the alignment that they, perhaps in their authentic self, aren't quite yet embodying. And you meet someone who presents themselves as someone that you hope they would be. Equally, they introduce themselves as the one they hope you will see them to be. And then one day, the mask comes off and you see who they really are. And you go, oh, opportunity masquerading as alignment. And instead of blaming and vilifying them, we say, because I know how bad that hurt, I will make sure I will never in my life fall for opportunity and I'll only look for things that are aligned. It goes for dating, jobs, all that stuff. And if you ask questions from that level of maturity, hey universe, hey God, whatever, hey higher self, capital I am, what do you wanna call it? Show me the option that is most aligned in 100% of my highest ethics and integrity. You'll get a, a very direct answer when you ask that kind of mature question. But when you say, bring me this, 
the universe doesn't really move, it's because the question is, have you seen whether that is a manifestation of opportunity or, or alignment? But if you say, please show me which option matches the highest alignment of my integrity and ethics, heaven's doorway always answers the call and opens up for you. And all you have to risk is missing out on those opportunistic experiences that are only meant to leave you with more pieces to tape back within you, with more scars to heal, with more wounds to care for. And the more you evolve in consciousness, the more you evolve in consciousness, the more you evolve in consciousness, <laughs> the less you can tolerate choices of opportunity instead of alignment. The falls become very, very big. And don't let your superpower of resilience fool you into thinking that, oh, it's okay, I can just heal and get over this. Oh, you can. Are you gonna do that again? And the falls become deeper and deeper and deeper. So be resilient, but be aligned. Because it's the alignment of your choices, choosing from alignment, not opportunity, that makes the resilience so resilient. And the more we choose from opportunity versus alignment, the less resilient we tend to be and the more we need to be in a slower vibration to see the forces that influence our choices. In other words, whose will are you serving? This is how you get set free. This is your get out of jail free card. <laughs> A get out of jail free card, no matter how desperately the ego tries to monopolize your reality. When you surrender like this, and again, what you're experiencing is being surrendered. There's an energy in you that will gaze into the eyes of another person, and there will be no confusion as to what is present in that moment. Without even words, just a presence, a feeling, a sensation, a knowing that God is real. I'm not asking you to give your life to God. That's what I've done. And I sit with you as the one who gave his life to God to become the space in which God gives only new life to you. The depth to which I have surrendered to the universe has the power and potential to save this entire planet. Because I decided I'm in this lifetime, this is where I'm going. 
and I'm going as deep as possible. And when I can't go any deeper, hand me a shovel. And I'll be the space in which only new life is breathed into you to give you the salvation of redemption. Not even making the choice yours, but just giving you the option to let go into that which has always carried you. Take a moment and feel this. It's quite a very specific frequency. It's one thing to channel samadhi, it's another thing to channel heaven. Just feel. At the very least, you now know what heaven feels like. So death doesn't have to be a fear. While we're in this space, I know it's hilarious, right? Oh, we'll take some questions. Let's just let me just do a little teaching, and then that happened. So we're just gonna have to adjust a little bit because we're kind of in a deep place right now. And I'd like to serve the authenticity and spontaneity of this moment, where obviously this wanted to come through. Didn't plan on teaching this at all. Didn't plan on crying in front of you, although I don't mind doing that. I cry, I cry every day anyway. As an empath, everything makes me cry. Commercials. In my building, puppies everywhere. 40% of my building in Seattle, people have puppies. Especially these doodly things. You think of the poodly doodly things? My favorites. The new one that everyone has is a Burmese mountain doodle. I want to eat chips and salsa and wipe my face with it. That's what I want to do. It's, it's a weird desire, I don't know why. I'm... <laughs> you wake up, you start desiring weird things. Can I get a dog I wipe my face with? <laughs> it's funny, half the dogs look like my dad. <laughs> May rest in peace. So yeah, I did not know this was gonna come through. So we're just gonna have to adjust a little bit. We're just going to suspend questions. I apologize. Wasn't my plan. <laughs> Wasn't my plan. Whose plan was it? Yours. <laughs> so we're just going to sit for a moment and really soak in this energy and integrate it. Because this is a very, very powerful frequency and it's a very rare opportunity to really align with the heavenly vibration of surrender. This is the vibration of surrender that people accept on their deathbed. And you are doing it without having to lose your body. This is a moment and a doorway of awakening. Where you are literally feeling the letting go into where am I going? Don't have to go down the tunnel. Don't have to go across the rainbow bridge. Don't have to go up the escalator to heaven. Just receive. Yeah, there, there isn't a day in my life where I don't cry. Mostly tears of joy. Sometimes tears of sadness, mostly joy. If you can feel the energy, this is the energy of the afterlife. We're still on Earth, but vibrationally, we're in the afterlife. And you can feel the energy. It's like, wow, there's this energy of like, there's a sense of like, 
Feels like it already happened. Whatever was going to happen, somehow did. And now we're on the other side of it. That's the thing. You're preparing, you're preparing, you're preparing, and then you find yourself on the other side as if it happened, and, and, and the in-between is still a mystery. Your eyes were open the entire time and you still missed it, because there's nothing to see. There's one timeline when you're seeking, there's one timeline when you're on the other side, and the in-between is but a dream. And here we are, in a brand new dimension, a dimension called relief and simplicity, heavenly perfection. Just feel. Just feel. Heaven is always here. The question is how much of it can we receive? And all we have to do is sit still in his presence and we drink it in vibrationally. We drink it in emotionally. And you're starting to touch into a very high level teaching that says, if you think it felt good having a desire, now you're going to experience how incredible it feels to move beyond desire. Desire isn't wrong, but if you think having a desire and chasing it is exciting, you can't even imagine how incredible it is when you move beyond that. You're going to have desires still, you just don't need them. It doesn't matter. Who can manipulate you at this point? Do this or else. And at that point, or else is interesting. Hmm, or else what? That's interesting. I'm interested in the or else package. Please let me know what I'll get if I select that. Do this or else. That sounds neat. I may want to shop and purchase this. Please tell me about or else. I'm the person who has no plan the, or, or else. Their description of or else is just or else. Or else what? What? What, I'm gonna lose the opportunity to be friends with someone who's giving me an ultimatum? Where do I send the basket of muffins? Where do I send the flowers? Sounds like a gift to me. Is a close friend going to say to you, a beloved going to say to you, hey, hey, do this or else. Hey, hey, watch your mouth. What the hell are you, who are you talking to? Or else? Or else what? I know who I'm serving. Tell me about this or else. I want to know who you're serving. Or else what? And that's when you start freaking out egos. Because they don't know. They have no plan. And you don't need a plan because you have truth guiding you every step of the way. Oh, if you don't do this, you're gonna miss out. On what? On what? What am I gonna miss out on? I'm going to miss out on the thing I'm not planning to do? That sounds intentional. If I didn't plan to watch a TV show, I will have missed that TV show. But I decided to miss the TV show, therefore I missed nothing. And if I recorded that TV show and watch it just in case, I'll have just have wasted an hour of my life. So what am I going to miss out on? You see, at this vibration, you literally cannot be manipulated. Because it's just truth. It just is. And it's always loving. And that's when someone breaks down from their ultimatums and goes, I just don't want you to go. I know, I'm so sorry, but I must. 
I love you, but I must. Why must you? Because you know whose will you're serving. You're not the servant of other people's egos. You are the doorway through which heaven's light enters this realm. You are the masterful depiction of eternal light. At this vibration, nothing can trick you, nothing can fool you. At this vibration, there's no such thing as illusion. There is only degrees of truth. There's no conflict. Therefore, what resolution is needed? The vibration already tells you this is resolution. A resolution that didn't need conflict to bring it to life. Already here. At this vibration, nothing can truly harm you. Things can affect you, but not harm you. I said, there's a dimension where cause and effect doesn't exist. In that same dimension, so there, there's a dimension where you start remembering your past lives. That happens for people. They remember what planet they're from. And then you ascend into dimensions where cause and effect disappear. And you know what else disappears? All those past lives that you remembered. Even that goes. There's even a dimension of reality where even past life was an epic saga. Just another bigger movie. In this dimension, astrological influences stop affecting you. You become incapable of being inconvenienced. There's just service. Like what happened to me early this morning. I woke up 4 a.m. to one of my dearest friends in the middle of an existential healing crisis. He texted me, can you help me? And I did a little dialogue through text. And three minutes later, totally fine. And I go back to sleep. Someone that once asked me, when do you get to rest? And I said, I live by Father's Day rules. I rest when my kids do. And my kids are the world. Nothing inconveniences me. I don't have to try to be like that, it's just what happens. You remember your past lives, then you wake up out of that. And you have to be compassionate enough to know how to relate to people at the various levels of reality. Oh, Matt, do you remember your past lives? Oh, of course I do. Right? It'd be so dogmatic for me to go, there's no such things. There are. But then there are levels where even that goes. The deconstruction wipes that out of you. And astrological influences and past lives and it all goes. And what's left is service. As that which created you.
that's what you're becoming. You're becoming that which created you, which essentially you already are. But that's like the seed saying, I already am a flower on the inside. I shouldn't have to go through the blossoming process. Oh, but you, you are a flower on the inside, but you'll never know what it's like to be the flower until you're planted underground, sprout roots, break through the soil. But I already know on the inside, I shouldn't have to go through, you see what I'm saying? You already are that, but you have to go through the experience of becoming it. So you're becoming that which you already are. You're becoming one with that which created you. You. And at this dimension that I'm transmitting right now, there isn't anything to hold on to mentally. And sometimes that could be a little mesmerizing. You go, how do I hold this? How do I control this, right? How do I put it in my little jar, or like a butterfly, a little twig? You don't hold it. There's nothing to keep straight. It's too obvious. At this dimension, there's no confusion. Clarity is not something that you assert for you to figure out to be in control of, right? There's no, there's no more subtle form of control that I'm trying to control my clarity, what I understand. I don't get it, not enough. I don't get it until I say I get it. It's not how it works. Clarity is not the things you understand in mind. Clarity is a space in which confusion dies. And sometimes in life, and I, and I play this role a lot by answering questions, and I love answering questions, although I always have to follow the auspicious flow of the transmission, which I'm doing right now. There are times to ask questions, and I always answer questions all the time. But if you think asking a question is gonna give you clarity, if you want the highest level of clarity, hand your question back to that which created it. Thanks for the question, God. I don't need this. It's, re it's rather distracting. Hand your questions back. Because all your questions are basically different forms of, am I okay? Yes. Are things gonna be okay? Yes. Is everyone gonna be okay? Yes. Am I doing it right? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Totally sure? Yes. Would you like to put that in writing? Sure. Can I get it notarized? Why not? That was a, that was a five second dialogue I did with someone and, and, and I didn't expect this, but their mind blew up in five seconds. They said, Matt, do you ever have questions? Yes, what did you do with them? I gave them back. That's all I said. <laughs> you did what? You gave them back? Yeah. Why? Because all they did, were, all they did were, was confuse me. And all it did was convince me that I needed to know something I didn't already know. I thought, well, that's distracting. And I gave it back and I said, thanks for the toy. Don't need that. And that's when God said, oh, a new master is here. Got to get on to it. Have you ever noticed how the answering of one question only leads to another? Oh, I just want to ask you one more thing, Matt. Okay. Okay, I just got one more thing. No, you know, you, 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 know, you said one more thing. No, but I, it was a two-part question. I didn't say that. Oh, that's a two-part question. Now we got 2A and 2B. Right, and they walk away. Come back. Okay, just one more thing. Just one more thing. Isn't that kind of like being a kid and asking your mom or dad? There's five more minutes and then I'll wake up. Five more minutes and I'll totally wake up, I swear to God. Honey, you said that five negotiations ago. It's now been 20 minutes. 
I know, but every time I dive in, I can't quite get back to the dream until about 10 seconds before you wake me up again. I know, honey, that's how it works. You can't get back to the dream. You can only wake up and dream differently. So I'm not saying questions aren't important because I answer a lot of them and it turns into dialogues and it's fireworks, but I'm just following the flow of today's transmission. Even if you took your questions, what if you took the most burning question and just handed it back? Like there's a fire in the middle of this area right here. And you thought, you know what is better use of this question than me try to figure it out? I'm going to put it in this fire right here. I'm going to let the, the blaze get bigger. Take your deepest burning question, put it in the fire. The fire of true clarity. A clarity that will only wake up in you the moment your question is gone. Bye-bye, questions. Bye-bye. Because would you agree that one who lives in a true state of clarity doesn't have the questions that they had before? Therefore, if you surrender the questions you have, you're going to find yourself in a space as that which has already been clarified. But you think, I can't let go of the question until I get the clarity. But the truth is, you cannot get the clarity until you surrender the question. That is enlightenment. And then you go, oh my God, I totally had a question. I thought my life and death, my life depended on it. And the question is wonderful, but it was just a chew toy for my ego. Yes, you're doing this right. Yes, you're okay. Yes, you're going to be okay. You'll always be okay. Everyone will be okay. The world's going to be okay. Love will always win. Environmental disasters or environmental hazards reverse themselves as consciousness wakes up. It's not too late. Light isn't losing. Darkness won't win. Did you know there was a soul contract to allow a creation like the Illuminati that said you could have whatever fictitious control of an imagined planet you want, and you can have control until the tipping point of consciousness wakes up. And the arrogance was, well, it's going to take a million years for that to happen, so we have a long time to be in control. And now there's a lot of shock, shock and awe behind the scenes. And as consciousness on the, in the front lines is waking up at a fast rate, behind the scenes, there's a lot of change going on. And all I'm going to say to you about that is if you can tune in vibrationally, like the way I can, after 9-11, there was a certain point where I could feel there were things out in this atmosphere guarding and keeping certain things asleep and in, in a state of duality and keeping certain things not known. And I will tell you that the things that used to guard aren't there anymore. The things that used to guard and keep the veil thick and dense isn't there anymore. There has been a huge hole created in the veil of consciousness of unconsciousness, and light is pouring in through that. And the people that behind the scenes used to be in control are scrambling and turning on each other. And one of the main reasons I believe that Donald Trump was made president was to distract people with a goofy ass person while behind the scenes things are worked out. And sure, he's doing some pretty scary things. Why is Donald Trump doing scary things? To coerce and motivate and inspire humanity to come together, to stand up for what they believe in, and to say, no. Right? Watch, I mean, I don't watch political stuff, but if you watch for five minutes, right, you watch any of these shows on Fox or CNN and they have the, you know, the Brady Bunch box of people talking. <laughs> you know what I mean? And everyone's sitting there going, this is an outrage. This is an outrage what he tweeted. Right? Right? I'm sitting there going, like, when did, when did a tweet become news? Right? This is an outrage. He must be stopped. Right? We all have a discussion of what is not aligned with our highest ethics. 
and it never turns to action. It builds up and builds up and builds up, and then it's got to be this revolutionary thing where people are breaking shit, breaking build windows and occupy Wall Street. We all take to the streets, and people go, okay, what, what, what do you want? We don't know. We didn't get that far. We're just angry and frustrated. Well, what do you want to change? I, I, we, a bunch of stuff. Like what? We'll get back to you. Okay, well, can you go home? Because you're kind of messing up the city. What this world doesn't know how to do is after we have a conscious discussion of what is not working, it does not lead to conscious action. And so that is why there is consciousness waking up in every human being so we can go from conscious thought to conscious action without bottling it up from conscious thought, refusing to take conscious action, then it becomes this revolutionary expression of, in the name of something better, we're still acting out in an unconscious way, destructive instead of constructive. So as a, as a, as a society, we're making our way. But the world is waking up in consciousness. And someone like Donald Trump, again, I don't have an opinion negative or whatever. I see it as a catalyst of greater consciousness awakening. And if you feel into the energetics of how things work in a polarity, which means things manifest through opposite opposing forces, there certainly is a lot more progress being whipped up with a Donald Trump than there is with a Barack Obama, for better or for worse. And all this is, is giving humanity billions of people, billions of souls that are in, that have manifested into the same vacuum of reality. Billions of people are existing on the same sphere of reality, having the opportunity to reclaim their power, stand up for what they believe in, and to act upon it. And that's all this earth is, is a giant field trip of angels in training who have the opportunity to reclaim their power together as one, as many billion strong. And the first step of this awakening is aligning with this consciousness so that you know the will of that which you're serving, which is that which is serving you. And once you get that awakened and active in you, you will start thinking and seeing and responding differently. And then you will start attracting people from your tribe of like mind. And then as a community, you will start acting and thinking differently, which is what manifested and assembled us all together as the love revolution. But now you're feeling the deeper dive we're taking. It is a reality of social progress, of spiritual evolution, in which everything can be recreated for the well-being of all with peaceful, loving, compassionate, heart-centered resolve. And only the most loving actions will do. And what you're feeling vibrationally is the energy of that which already won the game. Love. Consciousness. And the one thing you can afford to do to increase the likelihood of a tipping point for others to wake up in consciousness is to stop being afraid of unconsciousness. Because unconsciousness is just desperate survival mode that comes from those that don't know how to meet their own emotional needs. Covering up all their emotional pain by hoarding all the made-up money in the world. We're like 10 to 15 people own 90% of all the made-up paper. <laughs> Which is completely insane because if 10 people have all the money, that means the value of that dollar decreases. So what's the point of having all the money if it doesn't have any value? It's ridiculous. If you're going to make up a plan 
maybe it should be thought out. And when you've decided whose will you're serving, you will not be distracted by what you see. You will be the solution to everything in sight. And you will pray for the salvation of everyone being trafficked. You will pray for the healing of the Amazon. You will pray for every child to be set free at whatever border crossing, whatever is happening. And we will step by step, as I do in Project Resolution, we will pray and intend and visualize the outcome of our desire. And the reason that manifests quite quickly is because we're serving the desire of a highest divine maturity. Not just give me what I personally want, but I know the will of that which I'm serving. And may it be a light of consciousness and equality for one and all. And we can do that in response to everything we see without being hypnotized into anger and judgment against the things we don't agree with. If there are things you see you don't agree with, shine brighter. And someone will say, well, how is that helping to rescue children? And I would say, and how many children have you rescued complaining on Facebook? How's that working? Everyone has a different role to play. I'm a part of an energetic solution. I'm a, I'm a part of a very specific program like you. I know who I work for. I work for the light. There's just a certain way the light resolves things, and you have to trust it. Because if the light could just step in in one fell swoop and just make all this disappear, it will have existed for no reason. And all the people who have given their lives for all that's been created will have lived for no purpose. There's a reason this is unfolding a certain way, because we're learning and growing and evolving as a species while it's being resolved. And if you fast forward the DVD just to get to the ending, you're going to see the positive, happy ending, and then you're going to go to the credits and go, oh my God, now that I know it works out, let me go do it again and live it out slowly so I could really experience it. And that's why we keep coming back. So trust me when I say it all works out. It all works out. And this is a vibration in which it all works out. It's a, it's, it's a reality, a vibration, where there's only one solution. There's only one option. And that option is unity. Healing. Rebirth. Transcendence. Expansion. Ascension. Just feel. There's 10 to 15 people in secret meetings want to hoard all the rectangles. They can have it. I'm one with God. And it's such an irrefutable level of power that the entire world could hypothetically disagree with me and it would be me against the entire world and I'd wish the world best of luck. Best of luck to you. My advice is cross the street, count to 10. because I know the will of that which I serve. You just have to be smarter than the unconscious expression of pain. 
You have to be smarter than the manipulation of desperate people, all trying to secretly hoard and cling on to their false power, like little children that are afraid to wake up in reality. Oh, but will I have the same power when I wake up? Probably not. Well, I don't know about that. Well, it's no longer an option. A lot of us have been sensing there's like this countdown of like, oh my God, there's a window of awakening and the time is drawing near and I don't know if I'm gonna make the window. The countdown to ascension is not for you to, to, to think, am I gonna make the window? The countdown is for them to surrender. And the agreement is when consciousness awakens, you have a certain period of time to come out with your hands up or we will go in and find you. And that's what's happening right now behind the scenes. So please fear not. Something big is happening. And it's happening in broad daylight if you could just tune in and have the senses to feel. If you tune in vibrationally this world, you see a lot of people popping psychologically and doing a lot of interesting things. But you tune into the atmosphere, you tune in, when 9-11 happened, you had the energy of these invisible things watching you and following you and the weird energy. That's not there anymore. That's been obliterated. Consciousness is not going to win. Consciousness is already winning. I would bet my life on it. That's how clear I am on it. Not just the farm, not just everything I own. I would bet my life on every word I'm saying to you right now, and you can feel what I'm saying. And whether you, whether you have ed an education on this subject or not, you feel what I'm saying. It's just the way it is. It just doesn't come with a timeline because life is teaching us the outside does not determine the inside. Even that's a teaching. As we soak in this, your nervous system is being unwound. The visceral sensation of letting go in progress. The dimension where diseases are forgotten, where symptoms dissolve where concerns vanish, where fears go missing.
you imagine this dimension? Instead of like a missing person's poster for someone's lost dog or cat, it's, have you seen my limiting beliefs and fear? I don't know where it went. Have you seen my symptoms? If so, call this number. No one will call. They're gone. They're gone. And I can initiate you into this dimension because where I live, the afterlife. And there are degrees and dimensions and realms to the afterlife. From what I understand, it starts in the eighth and goes all the way to the twelfth and beyond. I teach about the fifth dimension, and I live in a fifth dimensional timeline as an eighth dimensional being, transmitting a twelfth dimensional consciousness. Apparently, that's the right ratio for what the world needs. And for even the slightest part of you, that because this might not be understandable or conceptual, very visceral, and it's normal for a party that goes, I don't know what this is. Do I trust it? What is this? Let's just let your nervous system acclimate to this new climate by letting ourselves know, honey, it's okay. This is good. This is the light. And we say to that part that's unsure, I love you. 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 See how different even the I love you's feel. It's interesting. I love you. 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 Every I love you tells your nervous system, it's okay, this is safe. We don't have to control it with understanding. It's, this, is, this is a different kind of knowing. It's an embodied knowing. I love you. 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 
I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. See how much tender, more tender and authentic it feels? I love you. 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 I love you.